Good morning and welcome to St. Thomas Anglican Church in Stittsville, Ontario. My name is Pat McNally and I'll be leading the service of morning prayer this morning and uh, my wife Bonnie will be delivering the message from the Gospel. It is August the 29th, 2021 and Reverend Lee will be back next Sunday as we begin. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. O come, let us worship. And now we will have our readings. A reading from the Song of Solomon. The voice of my beloved. Look. He comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
today is from Psalm 45. God has blessed you forever. My heart is stirring with a noble song. Let me recite what I have fashioned for the king. My tongue shall be the pen of a skilled writer. You are the fairest of men. Grace flows from your lips because God has blessed you forever. Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate iniquity. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh, aloes, and cassia, and the music of strings from ivory palaces makes you glad. King's daughters stand among the ladies of the court. On your right hand is the queen, adorned with the gold of Ophir. God has blessed you forever. A reading from the letter of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word, and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves, and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for widows and orphans in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it, and there are also many other traditions that they observe. The washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. What were the disciples thinking? What was Jesus thinking, for that matter? Eating food with unwashed hands was clearly counter to the laws and the traditions of the Jewish people down through the centuries, and it infuriated the Pharisees, a group of zealous Jews who believed that the only way to please God and make it to heaven was by meticulously following a long list of religious rules and regulations. God's original commands were the 613 laws of Moses that guided the ancient nation of Israel. These laws can be found throughout the Torah, the first five books of the Hebrew Bible or our Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The laws covered religious rites, rituals, and feasts, as well as day-to-day -day restrictions and requirements. They included many issues, as diverse as instructions about food, daily life, punishments, how God should be worshipped. Following these many laws was a core part of their identity for many Jews. Now there was also the Mishnah, an oral tradition of commentary on the Mosaic Law or Torah that introduced additional man-made rules that built a fence, so to speak, around the Mosaic Law so the people couldn't even come close to breaking God's commandments. The Talmud is the comprehensive written version of the Jewish oral law, along with the subsequent commentaries on it. As time went by, two major Jewish sects had evolved, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees oversaw the synagogues, and the Sadducees oversaw the temple. They didn't much like each other, but in general they got along because they each found their niche in Jewish society. The Pharisees viewed the entire Old Testament, Torah, prophets, and writings, as authoritative and accepted both the written and oral law. The Sadducees accepted only the Torah as authoritative and practiced rigid literal interpretation of the law, opposing the idea of oral law being obligatory or binding. The Pharisees changed Judaism from a religion of sacrifice to a religious religion of law while the Sadducees simply corrupted temple practices through greed and self-serving. As a result, together, they put a yoke around the Jewish people, similar to what the Egyptians had done to the Hebrews. And so, Jesus infuriated both the Pharisees and the Sadducees when he and his followers openly turned their backs on the law, ignoring the rule regarding the washing of hands before eating. Furthermore, it was well known that Jesus, on several occasions, had healed people on the Sabbath, breaking the rule forbidding one to receive medical attention on the Sabbath. When Jesus mixed dirt and saliva for the blind man, 
he also broke the Sabbath law against preparing mixtures for medicinal purposes. And by instructing the disabled man of Bethesda to take up his bed and walk, Jesus bid the man to break the Sabbath law against carrying. Amongst devout Jews, Sabbath law continues to this day. When Pat and I have been visiting our son in New York City, for example, my daughter-in-law has occasionally pointed out particular apartment buildings where the doorman's duties specifically include operating the elevator on the Sabbath because pushing the button is considered work and forbidden by Sabbath law. So why did Jesus choose to actively and repeatedly defy the Sabbath law? Well, first of all, as the Messiah, Jesus had the authority to correct, reinterpret, and even change the law. And it was taught that in the days of the Messiah, a new Torah would be given to Israel. And that's exactly what Jesus was doing. Jesus showed, not only by his words, but by his actions, that there was something far more powerful, which superseded all the previous laws, and that was love. A new commandment I give to you, that you should love one another. As I have loved you, so should you love one another. And, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Love your neighbor. As yourself. Jesus was making the point that God did not intend for his people to be so caught up in the extremes of rules and regulations that there was no place for compassion and kindness and love. Clearly, this was precisely the case with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Jesus calls them out on their hypocrisy, accusing them of holding their man-made rules above the commandments of God. And then we see his reasoning behind openly ignoring the rule regarding hand washing before eating. It emphasizes the point Jesus makes that it's not the outward things like washing hands that defile a person. Rather, it is what originates from within, the evils that come from the heart, our thoughts, our opinions, our words. So how does that affect you and me? We don't live under the same 613 rules the Jews did in Jesus' time, thank goodness. But we can too frequently be legalistic in our thinking, forgetting to put love ahead of all else. I could give so many examples. But one that particularly impacted me in my past was the church's stance on divorce. There was a time when a divorced person was not permitted to take part in the Eucharist because he or she was seen to be contravening God's law and therefore not worthy of full communion in the church. Although that rule no longer existed when I became divorced, it still left me uneasy and uncertain where I stood in God's eyes. Look at the damage our legalistic views have caused to Aboriginal people regarding their spirituality, to same-sex couples, to those who don't agree with our faith traditions. As Christians today, we should take care not to fall into the trap of Phariseeism, caring more about hanging on to the letter of the law than expressing the true meaning and power behind it. A perfect example of the door that Jesus opened when he proclaimed his new commandment of love was exhibited a few years later by Paul. He delivered at the Areopagus a sermon to the people of Athens, which was a watershed moment in Christian history. It was the first time Paul preached in a public, non-Jewish non setting. It could have been tempting for a devout Jew like Paul to see only the false beliefs of the Athenians' pagan religions and to dismiss, to dismiss them, perhaps even with disdain or ridicule. But Paul looked at the people with love, searching for something positive as a bridge. He first affirmed them, noting that he had noticed how religious they were, and from there, he went on to gently introduce the message of the gospel. We can learn a lot from Christ's command to love each other, our neighbors, and even our enemies, and from the example of Paul in Athens. We want to be receptive to those with different religious, 
moral, and even political viewpoints. We need to be open, as Paul was, to understanding those around us who do not hold the same views we have, looking for and affirming, as Paul did in Athens, evidence of spiritual hunger and wisdom. We need not be afraid that we'll get it wrong, that we might support something that isn't exactly what Jesus would agree with. No doubt we can often feel that there's more than one way to interpret scripture, sometimes leaving us unclear where we should stand on a particular issue. We can at times feel we're left with more questions than answers. But that's where we ignore the legalism, just as Jesus and his disciples did. Jesus made it absolutely clear that all the previous laws don't hold a candle to the greatest law of all, that we love God and one another, our neighbors and our enemies. If we hold on to love, if we allow compassion and caring to guide us, then we can be confident that we're on the right path. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the peace of the world. The Lord grant that we may live together in justice and peace. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for this country, and especially for Queen Elizabeth, our new Governor General, the Prime Minister, and all in authority. The Lord help them to serve this people according to his holy will. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for children and young people. The Lord guide their growth and development. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are sick, that the Lord will deliver them and keep them in his love. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are condemned to exile, prison, harsh treatment or hard labour for the sake of justice and truth. The Lord support them and keep them steadfast. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and all who have borne witness to the gospel. The Lord direct our lives in the same spirit of service and sacrifice. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment, the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And the collect for this Sunday, Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and sent into our hearts the spirit of your Son. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that all people may know the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favour and grant us peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.